Hi, my name is Leon Choros, and I am the adjunct professor of bassoon at Utah State University. So the audition piece that you'll be performing is the scherzo allegretto. There's a couple fun things to think about with this. It's a scherzo allegretto, so we want to keep it kind of light and fun. Uh, it's got a tempo marking, so I do recommend that you practice with a metronome. Uh, if you're having trouble, slow it down, change it from a dotted quarter note uh, pulse to change it to the eighth note. So you do it in six, eight. And if you can slow it down a little bit like that for starting practicing, it might make it a little easier to get things together. I'm going to talk about a couple things here. Um, I think it's a good idea because the fast tempo, the scherzo, and the larghetto, the slow tempo, are so close to each other. Um, it's a good idea to practice it with one beat at first, like keep it at 69 for both of them um, until you get used to it. And then you can just kind of feel it a little slower for the larghetto. Um, I'm going to show a couple things just for uh, how to kind of think about it and put it together. So the one thing is that the listener doesn't know that you're in 6-8, so you need to make it sound like you're in 6-8. So I think it's a good idea, since you're not starting on the beat, to emphasize beat two, where the staccato is. So the first two measures would sound something like this. So you just kind of want to bounce on that, on that beat two to give it a little emphasis. Another thing to look at and think about um, is the hemiola at the end of the first section. So it's got a rhythm that's one, two, three, four, five, six, one instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So I'll show how that sounds. And there's a really good example of how that actually works out in the part A ending. Um, I'll play one bar before. So it, it kind of breaks the beat a little bit differently. Um, one thing for practicing to get ready for this, just so you really feel good about your fingers moving well, is I would do two octaves of D major practicing in the scale, and I would do two octaves of practicing in B flat major uh, in the scale, just to really get used to it. And you could even go above the B flat above the staff, just to get your fingers really comfortable. I'm going to talk about the larghetto for a second. The main things to look out for is first you have, you're starting low and soft. So make sure that your support system is really strong for starting that first low note. And then it'll come out nice and easy. Um, and then do a good crescendo. And then when you get into the one, two, three, four, the end of the fourth bar is where the forte is. That first statement goes into a rubato and and then it's stated again an octave down. Make sure that you can feel that, that it's the same music, but an octave down. And then the third time it does it, instead of doing it one more octave down and doing the same thing, it changes a little bit. I'm gonna demonstrate that. So one more thing that I want to point out um, is the relationship between the first section, Scherzo Allegretto, and the last section, Scherzo Allegretto. If you're doing the B ending, um, there are ornaments all over the place. And I want to show how the music the first time is the same, basically, as the music the second time, but with ornamentation. So I want to show how that, that compares. When I play the first section, it should sound a lot like the second section. Okay, so now I'm going to perform the whole piece put together.
Okay, now I'm going to perform the A ending. Thank you and good luck to everyone. I wish you all well with your auditions.